A bill of materials, which is more commonly referred to as a BOM, is a list of the raw materials and associated quantities which are needed to manufacture, assemble or repair an end product. Much like a list of ingredients that a chef would use to make a recipe, a BOM provides us with a compact, inventory-oriented representation of the requirements associated with an end product. This information is typically stored in your ERP or MRP systems and leveraged to execute repetitive tasks such as replenishing all materials at once for a finished product. BOMs themselves are hierarchical in nature, with the top level representing the finished product and the items beneath representing the materials required in assembly. And whilst they can be as small as just two components, these lists can also be huge, with multiple levels and sub-assemblies in the list which have entire BOMs of their own. So the main aim of a BOM is to make things a little bit more simplistic and clear up some of the mess which can occur when we are dealing with complex parts with multiple sub-assemblies and components. However, beware, this simplicity can be highly deceptive. While managing BOMs is usually fairly straightforward, optimizing anything where those BOMs are involved becomes considerably harder. Previously, we discussed the challenges of forecasting for just one single product, but when you have multiple interconnected components, which all have their own individual constraints, such as stock levels, lead times, and service levels, this introduces a much higher degree of complexity, which can be enough to make your head spin. So how do you tackle this problem? Well, if we pretend we're making this rather impressive looking Millennium Falcon here, our bomb would be made up of multiple parts, such as the bricks, the panels, the windows, and even the type of paint which is used to color them. And each of these components would have its own individual constraints, such as an associated MOQ. Now this is all fairly simple until you consider that in reality, many companies produce multiple products where the same part may contribute towards multiple items. So in our example, the window here may also be used in another bomb, such as a race car or maybe even just a plain old house. And it's this interdependency which makes things far more complex from an inventory optimization perspective. So in short, the complexity of decisions can be proportioned to how many of these scenarios are linked. In a bomb, the chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and just one missing panel will result in me not being able to build an entire model, even if I had enough bricks and paint to last me for years. And this is just a fairly simple toy example. Imagine how upsetting it would be if you were missing a single screw costing you $1, which means you can't repair an aircraft engine worth over a million. As such, Optimizing production and stocks in the presence of bombs is not just about optimizing a single item, but about optimizing an entire system. So that's everything for this week. If you've got any questions, make sure you drop us a comment below, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.